Hey everybody, welcome back. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, you've known I've done a couple of reviews on welding machines. And in the last one, the Simdar um, flux core welder, I was trying to get some weld footage recorded. And um, this is the camera I normally use. I'm recording on my phone so I can have this camera in the video. And I wanted to record weld footage, so I just kind of taped these glasses over top of the camera in order to get some footage and while it worked it didn't work great and it's obviously something I didn't don't want to do a lot of so I thought there's got to be a better way so I ordered one of these and this is an auto darkening solar powered welding lens that goes from shade 4 when there is no arc going on from anywhere between, I think it's 9 and, is that right, 9 and 14? Yeah, 9 and 13. It goes between that, and then there's controls for um, sensitivity and delay. And I've tested it out. It works really good. They only cost, they're not even 20 bucks. I'll put a link to it in on Amazon below. They're really inexpensive, and I've tested it, and it seems to work fine. So what I want to do is design and 3D print something that holds this in front of the camera mounted on the tripod so that I can record some weld footage. I'll be able to adjust the darkness up the shade, you know, darkness up and down till I get it right and things like that. Plus, it's bright enough in my garage with all the lights turned on. I'll actually, when there is no welding, I'll actually be able to see what the camera's pointed at um, rather than just guessing at it like I did the last time. So, that's my goal. Okay, so here's my vision of what this thing should look like here in Fusion 360. And I've got it on the printer printing. And probably here in a few minutes it'll be done and I can get it off and show it to you. But let's take a quick look at it. Okay, so here is my part. And as you can see, it turned out pretty good. I'm not totally unhappy with it. It printed really well. This is on some transparent PLA that was in my GTEC A10M. Um, I had this much support under here. I thought I had tree support turned on, but I guess... I guess I didn't because that certainly is not tree support. Anyway, it came off pretty easy and this is super cheap filament so I don't really care. Um, the one mistake I thought I made, I was originally going to measure on my tripod from the front edge of the tripod base to where the hole is and put this hole there so this was back as far as possible. I completely forgot to do that. I put the hole all the way out here at the end. So the camera is kind of going to be further away from the lens than I had originally intended. Okay, I'm seeing a couple problems with my first gen design here. One is that there's no way, nothing to keep this from flopping down to keep it up in front of the lens. The other thing I'm seeing is it's focusing on this and not on the weld. And I think that's just how far of a gap I have here. Um, I think that needs to be much closer. So I think I am going to both remove some of this by moving the hole up as far as I can until this hits the bottom of the tripod mount under here. You can see how much distance I have. And I think I'm gonna cut a little out of here too. Okay, so you can probably see I made a couple more. This was the first one. And it was just too long. I had a couple other issues. No way to keep the small lens from dropping down. And then I made this one, and I shortened this one up. I redid this. I put a couple little nubs in here. And honestly, it works really well, except for one thing. I still didn't have the camera quite as close as I wanted it. And I didn't leave enough room under here for the base of the tripod. So I wanted to make another one, and I decided I was going to lose the fillets that turn this Z into an S-bend, and that's this one here. And as you can see, I did that. I also shortened, I lengthened this distance up slightly, and I shortened this up even more. And I got rid of the fillets, which gave me more room under here. And as you can probably see, that's just about perfect. And the more I got to look at it, and I've tested it, and it looks like it's going to focus through it quite easily. I'll show you the view through it here in a few seconds. Um, I got the, to thinking, why did I put this in, why did I put this auto darkening lens in this way instead of flipped around the other way with the controls up top? I remember I looked at it that way in the beginning and decided to do it this way. 
and I can't remember why. And I thought, well, you know, I wouldn't need this at all. I could probably just make that flat and I'd have the controls on the top. So I thought, you know what, let's try one of those too. But before we do that, I'll show you what this looks like through the lens of the camera. Okay, so here's what it looks like through the auto darkening lens. This would be the grind setting. I'll just turn the camera to one side so you can see what it looks like when we're not looking through the auto darkening lens. And um, so yeah, I mean that it's focusing past it just fine. I think that would work perfectly good. Here is the one with the lens mounted, what I guess is right side up with the controls on the top. And I do remember now why I decided to mount it the other way, and that is because the whole thing has to be pulled out to put to change the inner clear cover lens. Not that that's a big deal, because you can't pull it out past the controls, and I guess I originally thought turning it over would be better. But um, it mounts the camera lens slightly high, but I have looked through it, and I'll show you it through it. Um, I still seem to have full field of view, even though the um, lens is slightly high, the camera lens is slightly high in relation to the welding lens, and I don't think that's going to make a difference. Okay, I'm going to be testing the flat one, and unfortunately I'm not going to be testing this one because I broke it on the way out to the garage. I dropped it, tripped it, kicked it, then stepped on it, and that was the end of it, and honestly, if you look through the lens there, I think this one's going to work just fine. I just don't see any reason to um, worry about printing another one of the others. I like the controls at the top. I'm fine with having to put the clear cover lens on the inside in first. And then the other cover lens can fit in. I put that in last. But um, let me fire that up. Let's do a bead with it and let's see what it looks like. I have it set on shade 11. Hopefully that will give us a good view of the weld, but we can turn it all the way up if we need to. Let's give it a go. I think that turned out pretty good for a sub $20 solution. I was welding over top of existing welds that I had just done and hadn't be slagged. So there's that to keep in mind. But you know what? I think that worked out pretty well. And as I tweak it more, I think I'll get even better at recording welding. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope this might be of use to somebody. I have a review of another Simdar welding machine coming up in the next few days. This time it's going to be a stick TIG machine and looks like it has some pretty interesting features. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.